That time I got reincarnated as a slime, season 3 has finally ended with the recent episode 24 which is called After the Festival and it mainly covers Rumor's encounter with the merchants and how he resolves the issue along with a final conference with all the allies of Tempers afterwards. However, there were actually quite a few important details and contacts from the light novel that were removed from the episode so I'll be covering those points in today's video and breaking down the final episode to see if the ending of season 3 is good or not. As usual, a spoiler warning if you haven't watched the episode yet or might find the information I mentioned in the video to be spoilers. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe to the channel and share with your friends. To start episode 24, we'll be adapting the events that occurred in chapter 5 and the epilogue of the volume 9 light novel. Continuing from the end of the previous episode 23 where Mio Mouse was meeting with the merchants to resolve the issue regarding their payment. But just before this event took place, there was actually a minor sequence in the light novel involving Rumu and Riga that was removed. It was mainly praising Riga for helping to coordinate the security forces since Gopta was still being tortured by Milim down in the labyrinth. And it would have been nice if the anime kept this because it's rare to see Rumu interacting with Riga. Now, returning to the meeting, the anime actually removes and alters quite a few things from the light novel, such as the number of people that were supposed to be present, which was around 100 or so, with some being reporters hired by Muse, a duke from the Gaston Kingdom, or some were merchants who were friends with Mio Mouse. And if you compare that with the anime, you can literally count the number of people with your 10 fingers, which aside from just being lazy, it completely ruins the meaning of the scene and why there were supposed to be more people. To explain, it was to showcase that some of the merchants were not involved with the conspiracy to defend temple as they were genuinely trying to help Mio Mouse persuade the other merchants to accept the alternative payment methods and the reporters hidden among them also had a purpose. They were written to be the trump card of Muse in case the negotiations somehow failed but later they will end up becoming the downfall of Muse because Rumu was able to turn them against him which was supposed to help further demonstrate Rumu's intelligence and cunning nature. And yes, even though Shuna did bring in reporters in the episode, that sequence also had another purpose in the light novel. They were mainly brought in because Diablo's plan was to have them write about the apparent conspiracy between Muse and the merchants, so that their credibility would be destroyed which was successful as Muse stated in the epilogue that he along with the merchants had been deported by their own nation. So I was quite disappointed they replaced this entire power dynamic in the episode, but I digress. Another part not shown in the anime was how Remu was apparently listening to the initial discussion that happened on the other side of the door because he was trying to catch the rat responsible for orchestrating this issue with the merchants. That's why he only entered the room in the anime with his executives once it was confirmed that Muse was indeed the mastermind behind this. Also, some additional details on the internalized thoughts of Muse were not adapted into the episode as well, so to explain, he was actually quite confident in his plan to take down Tempest because in the light novel, he found Rumu to be unassuming and easy to manipulate given his status as a newly awakened demon lord. And the only reason Muse believed this is because when Grandpa Rosso offered him this mission, it came with the reward of becoming one of the five great elders, so he thought that Grandpa trusted him which further inflated his ego. It was for this reason that once Gelt brought out the Dolphin gold coins, Muse started to get nervous but much of the remaining scene that occurred in the episode like Mio Mouse paying the merchants and Mew scrambling to salvage his plan will play out accordingly with the light novel. Also the idea of using the carrot and stick method by having removed severing ties to the merchants while Mio Mouse pretended to help them obtain a second chance was actually mentioned in the light novel to have been suggested to them by Emperor Amasia which explains why Rumu thanked her in the episode. In any case, once the issue regarding the payment was resolved, Rumu held a conference involving the allies of Tempest and his closest friends, although the demon lords were absent because it explains in a light novel that it might make the meeting too crowded if they join as well. However, just before the actual meeting started, there was a prior interaction removed from the anime whereby Almasia praised Rumu for his handling of the merchants and her subtle warning about a possible future conflict with the person or group controlling the Western States Council now that economic and military means are no longer effective. And this will explain why Rumu stated in episode that all they could do now is to prepare for the eventual confrontation. So continuing on with the meeting, Rumor proceeds to ask the people present for their feedback on the Founders Festival and the first to give their opinion was King Gazer, who scolded Rumor for the projection screen used during the martial tournament but much of what he said will follow the light novel. Although the anime did omit the part where Amasia was defending Rumor by reassuring King Gazer that it would still be difficult for other nations to replicate the technology. And since Elmasia spoke out, she also offered to purchase the rights for the various inventions of Tempers such as the plumbing infrastructure and how she doesn't mind sending the researchers of Saren to study the technology or simply buying the parts directly if Rumu is worried about sharing the information, which is another aspect that wasn't adapted into the episode. And it was due to this reason that Elmasia had asked Rumu to send his engineers in the anime so I don't understand why they decided to remove the context for a statement. Also, even though the scene of both Elmasia and Aaron being super friendly with each other while mocking Ella for worrying too much was 
supposed to be played for laughs in anime. The context behind his intentions were actually more serious in the light novel. To explain, as the Emperor of Sarian, who was often regarded as a legendary figure, Elmasia should carry herself in a more dignified and regal manner, so having her behaving in such a casual way in front of all these important figures, it would be a major blow to her reputation, especially back in Sarian, where there are numerous elven houses that wish to take a place. That's why in the light novel, Ella even told the people present and the Imperial Guards of Saren to keep this a secret, and it would have been nice if they showed this in anime since it helps to deepen the lore of the series. Having explained that when Rue was discussing about the magic train with King Geyser and Almasia, there isn't much to add since the following interaction in anime will occur in a similar fashion to the light novel. Although I do want to mention that not only would the magic science of Sarian and spirit engineering of Dragon be part of the future joint research project for the magic train, Rumu stated that it plans to include the surmounters as well when Luminous eventually sends them over to Tempest. However, it was disappointing that anime decided to not include the part where Ella proposed to have the civil engineers of Saren help in surveying the location to lay the train tracks, because it shows that he was able to actually learn from his previous mistake of letting Tempest handle everything which would have been a good example of character growth in Tensura. And hearing this, Momiji also gave her opinions on the magic train but ultimately, as long as the tunnel system won't affect the integrity of Kusha Mountain, the Tengu tribe will approve of the project but it was still hilarious how her main concern was to have Benimaru visit her. Then it was Yom's turn to share his thoughts and it was cute that he let Muran handle the questions since he isn't exactly the most eloquent of people, but much of what she brought up were the same as the light novel. Also on a side note, the inclusion of showing a possible future where humans and monsters can truly exist among one another was a very nice touch by the anime. When it was time for the Bloomen camp to give their opinions, Fuse would introduce Baron Veya to everyone and apparently in the light novel, the king and queen were supposed to be present as well so I'm not sure why they decided to remove them from the meeting. Regardless, Similar to Muran, Veya will be asking about the role that Bloomer will be serving in this upcoming prosperity sphere, and everything they discussed was pretty faithful to the light novel. Although Ramu did mention that he was surprised how Veya was able to easily interpret his intentions for Bloomer. Now, following Veya's questioning, Badra will interrupt the meeting to complain about the lack of challenges during the Labyrinth Showcase, and even though Ramu wanted to scold him for being annoying, he decides to simply let Mio Mouse explain how that might change in the future. Essentially because of the amount of high-grade equipment along with the materials that can be acquired from the Labyrinth, many nations or nobles might consider hiring adventurers or mercenaries to challenge the Labyrinth in the future to earn a profit, and because of this, people might be more prone to improve themselves in order to reach deeper down the Labyrinth so it stands to reason that eventually, it could even indirectly improve the overall skill level of the participants as they experience more difficult challenges. And to further incentivize the challengers, Mio Mao's plans on implementing a bounty system as mentioned by him in the anime. But aside from that, in the light novel, he also plans on creating a lottery system where people can spend money to get the chance to acquire luxury items if they do not wish to farm them inside the labyrinth. Also, since Mio Mouse was already explaining his future plans for the Labyrinth, he will ask Yuki about a possible future collaboration with the Freedom Association. Although for this particular interaction, the anime managers retain most of the important talking points taken from the light novel. That said, Hinata soon offered her own suggestions for the Labyrinth as well like you see in the episode, and she mainly brought up her worries about the crisis awareness of people becoming worse if they are too accustomed to the idea of not dying inside, so she proposes to have high-ranking priests from the church to practice their holy magic in tempers. And the reason this choice warranted such a surprise reaction from Fuse along with Anna and Barkers in the anime is because knowledge on spells like Resurrection and God's Miracle which restores severed limbs were considered to be highly classified information within Lubalius. So having Hinata even suggest this partnership with Tempest meant that she doesn't care about preserving the secrecy anymore, and she even stated in the light novel that it would be good to have more people learn about holy magic because her logic was, if more people are capable of using restoration and revival magic, it can help to at least reduce the number of deaths that will occur outside the labyrinth in the future. Additionally, Hinata suggested another proposal for Rumuru, which is to allow the holy knights to train inside the labyrinth because in the light novel, she stated how they severely lack the experience needed against from opponents, and she even estimated how they'll only be able to handle Gozer at their current level. Furthermore, she also wanted the Crusader captains to join the training session, but apparently in the light novel, Anna and Barkers were initially offended by the idea because they assumed it would be nothing but average labyrinth monsters inside and thought it would be too easy for them. However, they would change their opinions once they learned that Vaudra was actually the final boss. That's why they said that it's over for them in the episode, and again, it's weird the anime decided to remove the context behind their conversation. So with the prospects of being able to learn how holy magic work and the military teachings of the holy knight order, Rumu easily agreed to Hinata's proposal. 
Either way, having finished listening to the feedback from everyone, Rumu proceeds to ask about their interaction with the Eastern merchants, another one of the reasons why he organized this meeting in the first place, and the statements from everyone present were pretty much follow the light novel, but I do want to point out that the statements also play a key part in helping Rumu determine the culprit's targeting tempers later on. Anyways, Rumu will end the conference, and he later had another meeting with his executives to discuss about their assumptions on the mastermind behind everything. To start, King Gazer was ruled out because Dragon was one of the first nations to recognize Tempers, and to put simply, Rumu trusted them, but it also made no sense for King Gazer to betray them from a political or monetary standpoint, which was also the same for the Bloomer Kingdom. And what reinforced this idea is that they apparently never had any contact with the Eastern merchants because their nation was simply too insignificant. As for Saren, Ella reassures Rumu that they only conduct business with trusted merchants and because they heavily monitor and control all their trading, they have never interacted with any of the Eastern merchants as well. Rumu did however mention in a light novel that he initially had suspected Aaron's party for leaking the information about Shizu's death, but he quickly dismissed the idea once he remembered they were the ones who helped him become a demon lord and learned that they were part of Sarian. Yom on the other hand owed Rumu a lot for his current position so he was never a suspect to begin with, although he did inform Rumu how they discovered the previous administration had connections with the Eastern merchants, but Diablo and Razen have already removed all ties with them. And of course, because Hinata was manipulated by Damrada and with the death of Roy Valentine aligning with the incident at the Inner Sanctum, Luminous has since ordered Lubalius to cut all connections with the Eastern merchants, so Rumu had no reason to suspect Hinata anymore. And with that, Yuki Kagurazaka was the remaining suspect, although Rumu was able to conclude that he was indeed the master that Claimer had mentioned back in Walpurgis after confirming a few factors. For instance, Yuki openly admitted that the Freedom Association has done business with the Eastern merchants, while indirectly stating that they will continue working with them despite knowing their plans of expanding into the western nations, and the fact that he has access to a large amount of high quality paper meant that he has a personal connection or vested interest with the merchants as well. Also the fact that Yugi was one of the few people who knew about Shizu's death and her connections to Hinata definitely did not help his case. Regardless, the rest of the evidence provided by Rumu in the anime was the same as what was stated in the light novel, so with everyone agreeing to be more careful in the future towards not only Yuki but the Freedom Association as well, the Founders Festival will finally come to a close. Now just before I end the video, the anime does cover the events of the epilogue which involves Muse reflecting on his failure to win over Rumuru and the conversation that occurred between Marabelle and Grandpa Rosso in regards to this matter. So starting with the sequence involving Muse, there is actually more to his defeated contemplation in the light novel and to clarify, Rumu did not only cut ties with the merchants involved but he threatened to even stop dealing with their respective home countries as well. And because of this, Muse along with the merchants have apparently been exiled by their own government as punishment for causing them to become excluded from the future economic sphere that Tempest will be building. Honestly, it would have been an amazing detail if the anime kept this minor part because it helps to show how ruthless Rumu can be and the consequences that come from angering him. Nonetheless, Muse was said to be deeply regretful of his arrogance in the light novel and he was fearing for his life because he had failed the Rosso family. But knowing that he has no way of escaping, he will actually make his way back to them in order to deliver this report, so maybe we'll see this right again in the future. Having said that, switching perspective to the Rossos, Marabelle's exchange with Granbel was pretty much the same as the light novel, although the part where Granbel revealed his reasoning for not outright destroying Tempest wasn't included into the episode. To explain, he has sent Muse to handle Tempest because he underestimated the intelligence of Rumuru, thinking that he would be easy to manipulate but also, since Granbel lost many of his pawns during the conflict between Tempest and Lubalius, he was afraid of losing Marabelle as well if he sent her. However, after being reassured by Marabelle that she would successfully take down Tempers, he will give her full authority over all the resources of the Russell family. And similar to how the episode ends, the Tempers Federation will receive a letter from the Western States Council, and it was essentially an invite for them to join the council. Overall, this final episode was disappointing for me because they took away a lot of the important character moments and story context that would have otherwise added so much depth to the scenes, like showing how Rumu easily took command of the narrative when he was dealing with Muse, the merchants and reporters, how each of the representatives of the nations carried themselves during the conference, the reasoning behind Hinata's opinions on the labyrinth, or the way Rumu was able to figure out and finally conclude that Yuki was the mastermind. All of the examples I gave could have been so much better but sadly they weren't, although I will still rate the entire season a solid 7 removes out of 10. But hey, at least season 4 has been confirmed along with a movie, so hopefully the studio will take their time and have more care put into both projects.
みんなに知らせておかなければならないことがあります<笑>実は劇場版第2弾の制作が決定しました以上国お同時にテレビアニメ第4期の制作も決定しました劇場版第2弾そしてテレビアニメ第4期ダブルで制作決定 But yeah, that was my cut content breakdown for episode 24. So, what do you think about the finale of season 3? And were my criticism valid? Feel free to share your thoughts down below and be sure to check out my other cut content videos as well. Also, if you enjoyed this cut content video, remember to leave a like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification button for more cut content videos as well. Thanks for watching, and as always, stay safe, everyone.